Pull them. Recording in progress. Okay. It's 7 o'clock, and we're going to call the select board meeting of Tuesday, July 11th to order. And first item is approval of the agenda. Second. Moved and seconded. A uh, couple additions to the agenda. The 3C is a letter of support to the Vermont Children's Trust Fund for Teen Center grant application for funding for the skate park design in equipment. And uh, 3D, a letter of support to the Vermont Community Foundation for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, the DEI work group's grant application for funding for a welcome packet pilot project. Um, and lastly, uh, in the uh, call it 4A category, <coughs> uh, approval of a public assemblage permit for Middlebury Tiger reunion on July 29th at the Sports Center. Those are the additions that I've been presented with. Does anybody else have any other additions? And uh, thanks to Dan's inquiry about the flood uh, resiliency project, we have a special feature of Representative Amy Sheldon giving us a full report on that under citizens' comments. Great. Ooh. Nice work, Dan. Oh, I want, we have to find out if we got our money's worth out of uh, yeah. the project in East uh, Middlebury, and Amy would be the one who would know. I moved and seconded. Nothing else. Uh, all in favor of approving the agenda with the three additions, signify by saying aye. 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 And we don't have any of our board dialed in, do we? No. Okay. Uh, next is the consent agenda. Approval of the consent. No, go for it. Okay, I move it as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Move and seconded. I'm gonna have to get this board going a little yeah. hotter oh. here. Uh, is there anything anybody would like to comment on in the consent agenda? Uh, I was glad to see the uh, subcommittees of the Energy Committee. I think that they've got good targets and uh, a lot of good folks working there. Okay, hearing nothing else, uh, all in favor of approving the consent agenda as drafted, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, citizen comments. Is this where we want to uh, we have uh, Susan Shashok? Yeah. Um. <clears throat> I think I got it. There we go. Hi, Susan. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. I just, I just want to say that um, I think that Kathleen has been very helpful and has been very helpful in talking about the flood resiliency project. But I just wanted to um, express my gratitude. It was a very different scenario from Hurricane Irene. Um, I remember I was a water system operator I 
All right. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. And we'll hear from Amy on uh, if your observations are tracking what Amy thinks. Amy. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Amy. Sure, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I would, I would share some summary and then hope to give you a little bit a more in-depth overview of it. It looks really great up there, and um, we'll see after the, after the flood really um, proceeds, but for now, the project has performed as designed, and if, if I can, I'd share my screen, and hopefully this will work. Just to give you a little overview of the, um, oops, the host can share. Okay. Can that, can that be changed? Voila. I've heard many similar co comments from residents of this library mm. commenting that it worked. Yeah. Can you see my, am I all fuzzy? Yeah, we've got a weird uh, zoom screen there. Yeah, it's just loading. So, Amy, I'll make you the host, but don't forget to make, make me the host <laughs> back. <laughs> but now I can't even get out of this, so oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that something that you could email? Um, slides, yeah. Well, email right now. Yeah. 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 Downstream of the Lower Plains Road Bridge. 
and the yellow line is the flood chute that we opened up there to increase storage capacity in that section of the project. Um, and the next section down here in the trees is behind Good Rose, again, where we opened up um, flood capacity by removing material and kind of um, designing it so that when there were high flows, the channel would stay mostly in the main channel, but then as it hits the 10-year flood elevation, it would access the floodplain adjacent to, but also flood chutes that were opened up. Um, and then the red line um, is the berm that runs from about Good Rose downstream to the townland, which is just west of the, the one box there, or on the left-hand side of the picture. So the pictures I'll show you are going to go from upstream to downstream, and um, uh -oh. won't let me. Won't let me show them as a show. Yeah, just people. Oh, cool. All right. Well, there you go. Trying new technology didn't work. <laughs> um, Is the share screen button at the bottom of your uh, page? Question, Amy. Uh, did the um, did the flood chutes work? Are the flood chutes full of water? They are but full of water. I went out yesterday afternoon and um, it was raging uh, behind the house at about five thirty. I was out of town until um, right around then, and uh, then I went. They were fully accessed. I went behind the Welch's house, and there was very high flows in both the main stream and the flood chute. The main flood chute that was. Um, kind of opened up. We had already been there before the project. And then also there we did a bunch of um, kind of hard armoring of the bank behind those houses mm -hmm. um, in the Welsh kind of neighborhood upstream and down. That was one of the places we were access the river for the project. And that hard armoring was good and it wasn't really even, um, didn't, the water didn't even go up against it. So there was um, really nice vegetation growing on the banks and the flood chute worked very well there. And then downstream, we did a lot of work on the flood wall itself. And it was, um, I would say it was a good five feet higher, I think, yesterday afternoon when I went out than today, but still quite high today. Very much a bank, bank full, even this afternoon. And um, again, the vegetation that was planted at the, um, the Gross's house looks really good, and the flood wall looks um, like it did what it needed to do. Well, obviously, we'll be able to look more to see if there was bed scour at the toe of the flood wall after the water receives further. But it does look very good. And then moving downstream behind Good Rose again, the flood chutes were being accessed. There are a number of them in there. We took out a lot of material, so the flood plain is bigger in, this, in the downstream portion of the project area. and those um, flood plain areas were not being accessed when I went to see them, but there was evidence with debris that had been deposited in adjacent kind of overflow channels, but then also on top of some of them that at the highest flows during this event, there was um, water on some of them. So it's looking really good out there. And again, I'm really sorry to answer your pictures. So, after the waters recede, will is it necessary to inspect to see what's left behind and see 
what the shoots and everything are, if they're everything's still clear? Yeah, I think we'll go back and look and see how they are, whether there was like any noticeable scour. Scour. And if places that we would be concerned about. But generally, it looks like the water spread out pretty well across the flood chutes, and um, it operated as as designed uh, by the engineers. That's how it's looking now. Um, yeah, and we will go back out and see um, afterwards. But as Susan summarized quite well at the beginning, this was. Um, so team project 10 years in the making and um, we finished up in 2021. So this was the first significant flow event since the project was completed. Well, That's good. great. That's really interesting. Yeah, we yeah. appreciate, uh, I'm sure there's others that, in the community that were interested to see how that uh, weathered the storm. So uh, maybe once it, Recede, you could just shoot us an email with your thoughts on it for the for the records so you don't have to take up your time. We're happy to have you come back if you feel like it, uh, but it w I think we'd like to, to hear once you see if there was scouring and what the maintenance, long-term maintenance of that would look like for us. And photos. Yeah, sure. I just said in photos, please. Yeah, I'm going to send you that. Thanks. I should have just, I did get it into a PowerPoint. I should have um, kept trying to share it. I should have just tried the PowerPoint. Maybe that would work better. Um, but I will send them. And there's good video, too. It was um, quite loud for a while here. It's going to work Yeah. Oof. Thanks for your interest. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Amy. Yeah. Bye, Amy. Bye, Amy. Is uh, is Judy on by any chance? No. She is not. Well, I hope she's watching on TV. I'm gonna I'm gonna just jump in here uh, <clears throat> because it's just kind of a citizen thing. Uh, because we have a citizen group that is our uh, proponents for uh, trees and uh, vegetation around the community and it was their effort that uh, got us uh, the designation of a, as a tree city USA black hangs on the wall uh, proudly over there uh, and after having done it for multiple years that we uh, have now been been given the growth award which is kind of kind of catchy trees growth uh, so we are now a Tree City USA Growth Award uh, awardee, and it says Tree City USA is a national recognition program founded in 1976 by the Arbor Day Foundation in cooperation with the U.S. Forest Service and National Association of State Foresters. Uh, and, and really it's, it's, a, it's a plaque for the efforts of our community group that that so uh, that puts in a lot of, of hours uh, cataloging planning writing uh, getting the grant to to plant uh, trees and and then doing the work of actually getting the trees in with our with our uh, town staff so uh, nice that's pretty cool and then the last is in the 4A's a public assemblage permit. Did everybody read your packet? It was a public assemblage permit no. uh, for <coughs> Middlebury Tiger reunion on uh, July 29th, 29th at the Sports Center. Uh, are there any questions on that? I would so Lisa Shaw is here I'm in here. person. Yes. <laughs> Mark is on. He's online. Everything looked really solid. And fun. And fun. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, uh, I'm disappointed that that overlaps my, my uh, hosting of a family reunion. We heard. <laughs> so. Other things going on, but yes. Yeah, we're but excited too. That's, uh, that's great. Yeah. So we'll be right, you know, after the uh, downtown block party, and we have a golf event at Middlebury College. So we've got alumni coming in. 
college has been very generous in allowing us from tea times right past, I think we're up to one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, we've got four other event, evening events that separate classes are coming in doing their own meetings, including the class of 83. Thank you for your shirt tonight, by the way. And um, we're excited just to, you know, as we've all seen in the last few days, we can't predict the weather and the concern of a potential outdoor event just seems a little too risky this year. Motion. I would entertain a motion to approve. Yep. We did it. You have to be creative in your own right on this one. Oh, Andy's the only creative person we have. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, move the approval of the public assemblage permit for the Middlebury Tiger Reunion on July 29th. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Yes. I hope we get a good turnout. Great. And, uh, we get a chance, I'll leave it with um, Kathy, I'll um, can see our, we had created a web page, and we've got our sponsorships on it, Great. and we've got a Facebook page, so I'll leave the links for you if you are interested in seeing what else we have going on, we're, we're excited to bring everybody back to town. And it is International Tiger Day, so we are doing that. Dan McIntosh has bought tigers, um, so he has got stickers, and uh, we're going to try to do something with finding the tiger around town on um, Saturday afternoon. So, and bring people downtown. Tiger Pride. Joe Exotic. There you go. It hasn't left town yet. None of us graduated <laughs> from there except for him. Only him. Thank you again. Thank you. Great. Good. Thank hometown you. Hometown boy right there. Yeah. What? I said the hometown boy. Oh, right hometown boy. I love That's Tiger right. the, Pride. The rest of us are not. Oh, man. Oh, oh it's in my blood. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Can't help it. Okay. Uh, no other hands up. Then uh, we're going to look for there she is. Emily. Oh, she's up. There we is. Good evening, Emily. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, so the first item is the asset management plan, which I, we've looked at a few times. I sent it to the state as part of the process, but essentially um, Aldridge and Elliott has a proposal for us, which the state has now approved. Um, so the next step is getting select board approval before we can start working on it, but it will be uh, asset management plan for the water system and it will um, also go into like capital projects, like creating a 10 year plan for projects moving forward. Risk assessment, uh, there, there's a number of components that are involved in it. And it is, it, it qualifies for state revolving fund it also, once it's complete, it increases our scoring for other <coughs> state revolving fund projects, such as Chippen Hill Water Tank. Mm -hmm. um, and so it will greatly help the water program, the water department, in getting funding moving forward. <coughs> and so, Emily, just to, to answer my silly questions. Um, these assets are things like the culverts and roads that the town owns, or? Is it more? Not, not culverts and roads. It's specific to water. Okay. So everything involved in our line. Yeah, very good. That, yeah. yeah. From the and well fields water. to the uh, to the handoff to the to the residence or or business line. Correct. Okay. Correct. <clears throat> Excellent. Any other questions? The funding, the funding that we qualify for from the state, it, it's all forgivable up to 50000 and our um, quote came in under that. So mm -hmm. it'll, we, we pay up front, but it all gets forgiven in the long run. So now that the state has approved the draft proposed asset management plan, I move to approve the proposed agreement between the town and Aldridge and Elliott to establish an asset management plan for the town's water system for a cost of $38,400. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <clears throat> awesome. Then 
Our next item, also on the water topic, um, is the funding for the final design of the additional water tank on Chipman Hill. The, through the same uh, funding, the state revolving fund, the level two funding will pay for a final design at no interest and no administrative fee on a five-year repayment plan. And they will also forgive $17,360 of the $62,000 originally quoted. We did have, I, for, I think it was a month ago, we got approval for a change order um, for the water tank that adds an additional $5,300 to the overall design cost. And I, I need to circle back at the state, but I think we could probably get that rolled into this as well. But that's a, another step that we haven't haven't made it yet. Questions? And it's got a 0% per cent interest rate and yeah. zero administration fee. That's great. Mm -hmm. and, and I, my understanding is it will be refunded in the end anyways, right? Mm. These So with this one, the uh, step two uh, funds, they are zero interest, zero administrative fee for the five years in repayment. And then if it goes to construction, you can roll it into the level three funding, should we so choose to. Okay. Which then, then that does tack on um, a 2% typically administrative fee, but it also extends it to a 30 year span for payback. So it's basically rolled into the construction loan. The outstanding amount is rolled into the construction loan after the five years if you go to construction. Okay. So, Emily, at this point, are they still looking at both the concrete and the uh, glass fused, both options? <laughs> so, I went to St. Albans today where they are putting up a concrete tank. Um, I also have plans to go look at a glass fused to steel tank in the coming weeks. I have some reservations for the latter. Okay. Um, Champlain Water District, South Burlington has two of them side by side, one of each side by side, and the glass fused one is being taken down to be replaced at a 30 year lifespan um, to be replaced with concrete okay. because they had issues with subbase moving. The way the concrete is constructed, it's made to move a little bit more. The glass fused one is not as accommodating. Mm. Um, so it, it gives me a little more reservation. We still, we still have the engineer working on um, designing the specs to accommodate either. And we will, even if we only go with the concrete, there are, I know there's two vendors that would be bidding, so it wouldn't, we, we would have multiple bids still to look at, so, which was part of my concern. Um, but I do have reservations with Glass Fuse to Steel. Gotcha. And it was also, St. Albans has one of each where they're constructing this concrete one. Um, there, I mean, all of the bolt holes in that Glass Fuse to Steel, those are all maintenance concerns down the road. So, um, I'm getting a life cycle analysis done for the concrete tank. I have a feeling that even if the upfront cost is slightly less on the glass fuse to steel, the long-term cost and the lifespan might might push us in the other direction. Sure. Thanks for the update. Good question. Any other questions? Pleasure of the board. I'll move to approve the loan agreement with Vermont Municipal Bond Bank for a loan in the amount of $62,000 from the Vermont State Revolving Fund to support the final design of additional water tank on Chipman Hill. Second. We can second it. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank Emily. You. Thank you. Chief Shaw. Tiger pride, buddy. <laughs> Quarterback to a defensive halfback. <laughs> oh. Gotcha. Well, thank you for your time this evening. I'm here for our annual turnout in the air replacement program. Uh, this year we're requesting six sets for a total of $18,089.14. 
and looking for sole source provider of um, Bergeron protective equipment out of New Hampshire. Again, this, this company far exceeds others in the fact that they can repair turnout gear. And uh, that extends the life of our turnout gear and allows us to cycle some of that stuff that's slightly out of um, compliance to members that are uh, exterior firefighters and stress the dollar as far as we can. Questions? Get the monies in the budget. It is. It comes out of the capital fund. Uh, that there's twenty one thousand dollars in there as we speak. So okay. we were a little light last year. We we only needed to purchase uh, five sets last year. So I move to approve the request from the fire department to purchase six sets of turnout gear from Bergeron Protective Clothing LLC for a cost of eighteen thousand eighty nine dollars and fourteen cents. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. I have a question, Chief. Yes, sir. How's the summer going? I know it's summer's your busy season. Summer's right? the busy season, yeah. Help, help is busy, so they're off. And last night we were in Montpelier and Waterbury all night. So yeah. Ooh. we did a bunch of uh, uh, swift water rescues there. It's so, really? Yeah, we got a chance to kind of practice some of our skills that we hadn't had an opportunity to do. So it was, uh, it was very rewarding, for yeah. sure. But uh, it's really devastating over there. It's crazy. Oh, the pictures are amazing. Unbelievable. And, and how fast the water rises. You know, we got water, boats down State Street and couldn't get them back up. The current picked up that much. So, wow. Yeah. So we parked on the State House lawn for a while and thought about some different options to get back. So, and then we did. Uh -huh. But, uh, yeah, it's just crazy for sure. On another note, we will form a committee to start the replacement of our utility truck. That utility truck will be approaching 30 years. Um, hopefully we can replace it with a truck that was just as good as that. That truck came to us 25 years ago and 26 years ago and we adjusted the shift points on the transmission. That's all we've ever done. <laughs> so I, I hope to replace it with something similar to that for sure. It'll be. Is that a pickup? Uh, what's that? Pickup truck? No, the, the bigger utility. The okay. pickup will come after that for sure. You yeah. say it's only five years old? 25 now, yeah, and it's the process now is uh, okay. it takes us about a year to, to vet through the, the vendors and, and build what we want to build, and then it takes uh, now two years to build because of COVID, it's really messed that up still. So, so if you start now, you'll have it. Well, hopefully, here right, we'll have it working absolutely. Yeah, but I'll I'll run that through the. Hopefully, you'll you'll be luckier than the police department. Yes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> you kind of just gave up and started over again. Yeah. Hopefully we don't have to do that. But I will uh, bring that in front of the infrastructure committee. Today, I, uh, at about 10.30, I saw this convoy going through Route 7 really fast. Swift water rescue from a couple of counties, and they were pulling boats, and they had six or seven uh, utility-type vehicles that you had yeah. escorted with black, big black SUVs, like it was following the president. It was <laughs> lots of flashing lights, and they were going through town at about that's 50 the, miles an hour. That's the group from Massachusetts, I think. Okay. Yeah, North Carolina had 35 guys there last night, and holy cow! Everybody 17 wants. vehicles. They they've got a trailer full of flat bottom boats. It would just make a drool to see all that stuff. But that's all they do. I didn't yeah. realize that there was mutual aid at the state level yeah. Yeah. Um, until the governor was talking about it yesterday. For sure. Yeah, really neat. Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Homeland Security showed up with three tractor trailers, two reefers, and another truck. Wow. Yeah, the resources are there. You just got to, I mean, the state was much better prepared this time, for sure. They really knew it was coming and prepared themselves better. There's Thanks. still two feet of water in the basement of my uh, employer in Montpelier. Yes, yep. I bet the printers aren't printing at the they moment. They are not. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Well, thank, thank you, guys. Much. Thanks, thank Chief. It's great. <clears throat> okay. Library. All right. And Dana may be joining us on via Zoom. Absolutely. Here. She's here. And uh, 
We have some old tokens for you. <laughs> Sorry, Ken, you have some old, don't you? I do, but okay. I'll take some more. Oh, you will? Okay. Yeah, I've got them in like 19 books at the house. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not doing anything, but... Um, <laughs> I don't have so many, but I love you. them. You like They're maybe read a few at a time? <laughs> yeah, like six. Yes, I know. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> I, I have so many as well. And I'd like to point yeah, out that we are joined by Dana. Oh, look who's with her. Oh. oh. Congratulations. Yes. The second cutest baby born in the last couple of months. Yes. yes. For sure. Yes. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully she's good. Wilder's putting the, the other one down, so I'm kind of stuck with her for the meeting. So I'll, if I jump up, I'll be right back, I promise. She is really cute. Great. So we've got Dana. And uh, Amy Mincher is now the president of the Ilse Library Board of Trustees. And uh, I'm the chair of the... Uh, the 100 project team we uh, submitted uh, an extensive package of uh, information to you that I hope you uh, you have there but I want to start off with a quick update on the state of the library after a torrential uh, downpour mm -hmm. uh, we had only five uh, leaks uh, that we know of uh, two in the MCTV studios on the uh, top floor one in the uh, elevator room, room. Uh, one in the Vermont room, and then uh, we often get in heavy rains leaks in the community meeting room. So those are being uh, dealt with, and I believe that Emma Lee is coming by tomorrow to take a look at those uh, those things. And uh, Royce McGrath, our acting uh, library director, also reported a couple of uh, air conditioning units, one of which is completely out of uh, Commission, the other which was a jury rig repaired by somebody who said, unfortunately, they don't make the parts for those uh, anymore. So our, our need for uh, library improvements uh, continues. However, we're really excited uh, at the stage where we are right now. Uh, we have received uh, conceptual designs from three architect and design firms and, uh, and uh, teams. And um, David is working with uh, Emily and company to uh, print out some of these architectural plans which are two feet by three feet they've got a special printer there and those are going to be available in uh, David's office hopefully in the next day or two uh, if you'd like to stop by and take a look and see what we have got there it's it's really quite uh, quite interesting to see what these folks have uh, have come up with um, I need to make sure that we give special credit uh, to Judith Harris, who especially during uh, Dana's leave has been doing heroic uh, work. Uh, she's our technical advisor now interfacing with the, uh, the architectural firms and dealing with every little question that came up during this, uh, this design uh, competition. So she's done a great, a great job. And it. all those questions are up on the Ilsley website and they're really interesting to read and see what the architects were asking. Uh, she updates that. Well, I think it's prob probably over now since they've submitted their designs, but um, almost every week she had new questions. Yeah. So we figured that there were certain people who had kind of a, a bigger stake in this whole process, so we've given uh, copies of these conceptual designs to the library trustees. Uh, Dana will be sharing them with uh, the library staff uh, tomorrow. The Ilsley 100 project team has uh, copies, but we figured that although we've been pretty deeply focused in issues of, of library design and development and need, we're not architects, so we're not necessarily brilliant at looking at a set of you know floor plans and elevations and so on. So we have uh, engaged at no cost to the town or anybody else uh, the uh, talents of three local architects who amazingly are n have no conflict of interest with these other firms which believe me in a state this small is not is not easy so we've got a uh, glenn andres and tom keefe and uh, david hamilton serving as our professional advisory group and uh, they're they're looking very very closely at these plans and they're going to report to us uh, us as well uh, so we're, the plan is that we're initially taking a look at these plans anonymously. That is, we don't know who submitted which plans just to respond, to see which ones we like, to see what kind of questions we have. Uh, subsequently, the project team together with the uh, professional advisory group will get a presentation from each of the firms and have a chance to interview them, which is particularly important because we feel that uh, 
you know, having a good chemistry between the architect and the client and checking on their ability, especially to listen, uh, is a good idea. So that'll be happening, I think, the week of July 24. 24th. Yeah. Um, and uh, following those meetings, we'll be putting these designs on display in the library and inviting uh, people to come and, and comment on them. Um, and then on August 9th, the date on this, uh, on these bookmarks, beautifully designed by Amy, um, on August 9th at 6.30 p.m. in the uh, Town Hall Theater, we'll be having kind of a public meeting where each of the architects will present their vision. We'll have an opportunity for questions. People can talk to them and, uh, and so on. So we're very, uh, we're very excited about where we are in the process, and we welcome your input as well if you want to take a look at those plans. Uh, I, I've taken a, a quick look at I find sometimes they generate more questions than uh, anything else, so we're happy to entertain those uh, questions uh, as well. Um, one con there's one concern that we have, uh, and that is that these are concepts. These are conceptual designs. And people have a tendency when they see a picture of something to say, oh, I hate that, <laughs> right? Or they have strong reactions to, to the visual. And so we're really going to be emphasizing to people as much as we possibly can that these are just ideas at this point. We might go more with this one, we might go more with that one, but that's not what the library is going to look like because once we choose one of these firms to work with, we're going to have more rounds of public input uh, and so on. So we can really use your help in getting that message uh, out to people. Uh, during that time, so we're still trying to um, to get the word out. Uh, we'll be at the at the um, town of block party. Uh, I'm wearing my Ilsley T-shirt here. Going to head over to the festival on the green, hand out some uh, bookmarks uh, and so on. We hope to to put in appearance at some of the town uh, committees to to spread the word uh, a little bit about that. We'll have an article in the in the paper uh, shortly before the uh, the public meeting. And meanwhile, of course, we're working on the, the funding side of things, uh, as, you, as you read. And we have one quite interesting idea, and maybe Dana, you'd like to chime in on this, um, which was an idea that came from Shelburne, saying, OK, well, you think you want to have a bond vote. Maybe before you have that bond vote, you might want to try to take the temperature of the town a little bit, kind of see what they might be up for. Dana, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Um, sure. We really haven't, I haven't looked into it too deeply yet. I've just been talking with the, um, the former director of the Pearson Library about how, how they did it. And they contracted with a, um, a statistician that works at UVM, um, and he helped them write a survey, which they sent out, which asked a couple questions like, you know, are you familiar with this project? Do you view it favorably? Things like that. And then it said, would you support a bond vote? for this project to the tune of $6.5 million? Um, and would you support it for a bond vote for $3 million? So it kind of had a couple different price points, I guess. Um, and then it had space for comments. And so they got really good turn or response rate, I think close to 25%. Um, they mailed this ever in the town, 25% of the populace responded. And they had really overwhelming support, over 50% um, for both the 6.5 and the 3 million. Um, obviously, it was somewhat higher for the 3 million, but that's what ended up giving those trustees and the select board and shelter and the confidence to go for the higher bond amount. Um, so that's something that we're thinking might be worth exploring um, as we get closer to an idea of what a bond, what kind of bond might be. Can I throw in a little comment here? Uh, one interesting thing about taking a survey for people's um, stomach for a bond is uh, there's a difference between a, um, a voter and a property owner. And so, um, you know, a voter um, might, without owning property, might be in all agreement. But it's only going to be the taxpayers that are going to be paying off that bond. So it's an interesting mix. I know through the rent and the owners and stuff like that that there are, but directly out of their pocket comes, and, and there, there's a lot of property owners that don't, can't vote. 
So it'll be interesting. So I, I should add that one of the questions that they did ask in Pearson was, are you a property owner or are you a renter? So they have that. Great. Um, cross tabulation. I don't know what you call it. I'm not a, um, not a big statistics person or survey person. But they were able to say of, of property owners and of renters, here's what percent of the which way. It'd be interesting. I think it'd be an interesting thing to do. That was, that was broken out in their demographics of right. their result, you know. And I think, well, we can, we'll take a closer look at what they did. And, and uh, if we think this is a good way to go, we'll come back to you and ask you about that. So. Um, one thing I did want to, po to point out is that I believe included in your packet was a draft of an early version of our designed goals, which is a document that we're really using to evaluate these uh, conceptual designs. The final version is contained in the larger packet. It starts on page uh, 18. And basically, we're going to be looking at these conceptual designs with an eye to the extent that they meet the, the design pillars that we were looking for in terms of welcoming, accessible, safe, uh, sustainable and so on. Looking at cost considerations, uh, to what extent does it look like this is within the ballpark of what we were, were thinking. Uh, we're concerned about the historic preservation aspect of things because it is a historic uh, building. Um, we're particularly concerned about the extent to which it meets the program. Does it do what we really need it to do? And Dana and the staff are going to work quite closely with that. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be looking at how these teams uh, communicate with us in their, in their presentations. So, um, anything else? I'm, I'm just dying to talk to people about it, and it's 100% confidential, and we haven't had an Ilsley 100 meeting yet, and it's just driving me crazy. So, so, <laughs> so is, is um, a reminder of something I try to continuously uh, think about, is we've got these conceptual designs, but to me the most important thing is that we hire the right company mm to do the project. So it's not only looking at a design, which we're really, you could be over, you know, just think of this as the greatest design, but we have to think about the company. Also, we have to remember this is the, the um, RFQ process. This is not the RFP process. It is conceivable that we could, well, we're picking somebody to ask them to respond to an RFP. We could pick two or we could pick all three of them to respond to an RFP, is that correct? Uh, that is technically and conceivably correct. Yes. But I don't think it would be, yeah, so we'll. I, I agree. I, I don't think it would be helpful be nice to, if we to, have have to start off with four. three and end up with three. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, we're hoping to <laughs> narrow things down a little bit. I well, I, I agree. Yeah. I, I agree, but this is just a qualifications. We're just mm -hmm. we're picking companies that are qualified to do this. Mm -hmm. It's a big. We're not job. offering a contract. And we're you know we're particularly looking to see how they interact with yes uh, with the public on that August 9th meeting, and hopefully we'll have opportunities for them for the architect teams to really interact with the public and answer questions, and um, hopefully all of us can kind of keep an eye out on on what that what those interactions look like and how the public responds to how they interact with with all of us. Uh, because you know it's partly. Uh, a sales job, right? We've got to convince the public that, that this is really something that we need and it's going to benefit the town. So, and they all noted in their proposals that they that usually this process comes after a long deliberative process with the community, mm -hmm. and so they felt like they were at a slight disadvantage to just use all of our materials that we've been doing without having really big conversations with the community. Wh which they are, because, you know, we sort of said, look, here's what we have in mind. Go, go come back with your vision, but you can't really interact with us. So, uh, but that'll be and that's why the next step. It's conceptual, and that's, I think that's the missing link that will happen after we, um, we choose one. If we're able to stick to our timeline, uh, we hope to come to you at your August 22nd meeting uh, with a recommendation for uh, the, the RFP for a firm or firms uh, to whom we could proceed to the next uh, step. This is, a really, this is a really exciting time for the committee. I think this yeah. is really fun. We're really, they've worked really hard and, and 
uh, Joe's and Dana's leadership has been great to get us this far, and it's going to be a really busy, um, busy month for the for the team and the community. Hopefully, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would just like to shout out all the social media. I think it's really accessible, and I think it is very straightforward with goals and avenues to kind of get that information out. Thank you, Izzy. I appreciate that. Of course. Any other questions? Thank you all. Yeah. Look yeah. forward to the presentation. Yeah. 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 Apparently, it's on the same night as the demo derby. So one of, one of the. Well, I, I, I just put it on my calendar. I was like, oh, that's oh. field days. <laughs> you know, so we we looked really hard. It was about the only night we could get the town hall theater because they're booked, you know, so. Could you put up a tent at field days? <laughs> we, we, will. Will. we will have, we'll be okay. present at field days. Okay. The okay. library will have a booth at field days in the, you know, home. Uh, in the book hat building. Oh, the yeah. exhibitors, yeah. In the, we'll, be, we'll be exhibiting there. Gotcha. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you can say, come to, the, come to our event tonight. It's not so, you know, what we should really probably do is sponsor a car. Yeah. Yes. In the derby, that <laughs> oh my gosh. That would be so funny. And it would be like the demolition of the old part of the library. You know, you could win the chance to come in with a sledgehammer and. Would that be a, de <laughs> would that be a demo car or something? Demo library. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I like all, right. all this. I'm that sure you could get somebody to put that on the side of their vehicle. You, uh, you could. You could. I think that's a great idea that you should actually take. Izzy will ask all her friends who are going to be in the demo. Yeah. The derby, yeah, so. yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. The Izzy we'll Library. We will number. make this happen. You help us with that, Izzy. Yeah. Oh, no, the bookmobile. <laughs> I'll be at the, the next bookmobile. Meeting. The bookmobile. There we go. <laughs> Dana, any um, any thing on your end? All right. I put a time on my calendar later this week to swing into David's office and, and take a look at the. Uh, oh. Yep. Yeah. It's even been hard for us to just look at the uh, digital yeah, copies. The sure. Yeah. The, these are these are you know three foot by two foot yeah. uh, thing that we're trying to look at them yeah, on, on, the, on the laptop right. and you know, like I see in this. I'm thing like zooming. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, trying to did, make it work. Did yeah. any, was one of the questions what you would do if you had a, a smaller budget or anything, or would that be? That's that one of the RFP? questions that John Frieden is planning to ask, I'm sure, at the uh, August 9th meeting. <laughs> you know, we're, okay. and we'll, we'll, we'll be uh, coming up with a list of questions that we'll ask everybody at their, mm. you know, at their interview. I suspect that'll be some one of, of them. Some of them address phasing, uh, doing it in okay. sections. So and that that is addressed in some of their. Mm -hmm. So we as a project team are having two hour two hours with each team. In, in meeting. Yeah. So and I know we're gonna have standard questions to ask each one of them. We'll make sure that's one of them. Okay. Sounds good. Well, I think that, that also I think they speak to that a little bit. Amy was saying they all were feeling that they missed out on that community conversation aspect. They can kind of build to the community's desires. And I think they would all be able to build to whatever budget we gave them. Um, they worked with 15 million because that's what we got for the scope of the projects as it stands now. And I think any of that would be able to work. But, but you will recall that in 2017, when the proposal came to the select board, there was quite a bit of sticker shock, you know. And one of the, one of the things they've submitted is they've submitted budgets. You know, this is, this is what we think it would cost for the different parts of it. So we're going to be very cost aware. Hmm. Great. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Is uh, Jeremy on there? He is. <clears throat> and Aaron, let's. Hi, Jeremy. Yes. We can hear you, but can't see you yet. Uh, we're doing well. There, now you're yeah. in with us. Nice. Okay, so uh, your grant uh, request. Yes, sir. Uh, we kind of filled in the rest of the narrative for everybody to read. Mm -hmm. um, 
Would you, would you like me to read what we've written down here, or I'm not sure what you guys have seen. Uh, Jeremy, it would be great if you gave us the 20,000 foot view of your application and the um, uh, bottom line of the grant request. Yeah, so uh, as I spoke in the last meeting, um, we inherited a, the last dated system. We're looking to basically overhaul it uh, completely. Um, this would allow us to have safer, safer operation of the system. Um, be able to monitor and adjust it as needed so we can safely discharge to the town um, any wastewater that we produce. Um, we're currently operating under the Otter Creek Brewery permit. Um, we won't be using our process. We won't be using it exactly the same as them, but until we determine that process, we do need to upgrade the system so that we can use it and um, make the repairs that are needed. Um, Champlain Associates has written up a proposal um, with a, I think, very conservative uh, estimate. I'm, I'm confident that we will find some uh, items that we don't need to spend on here. So I think their, their kind of number, they, their budget, they have 153000 I think that is more than encompasses what we want to do, and I think hopefully we can come in underneath that. Um, but it would be replacing uh, much of the plumbing in our pre-treatment um, shed, uh, adding pH uh, dosing pumps and uh, new flow meters, new sampling equipment. Um, all of which we have is from the from the early eighties. Most of it doesn't work very well. <laughs> Kathleen, what's the role of the town as the administrator of these grants? So the town will be the applicant and yeah. uh Whistle Pig will be the sub recipient of the grant and we'll need to enter into an agreement with Whistle Pig and potentially Agrimart. Yeah. in order to um, clearly outline their roles and our role. It would be financial? We have not pledged any money towards right. this match. Will the, will the town, will your time be paid for by these companies? Hmm. It would be great if we could add yeah. in an administrative fee. I, I was looking at the $12,000 legal administrative in uh, whistle pigs, and I was wondering if that was for the contractors or if there was a, a piece there for the uh, the grant and reporting requirements that might fall in the town. This is something we've talked about, the need, because we do more and more of these, and, and it's a, something that we have not previously been charging for, but we feel I mean, right now we don't have the process in place, but it's something we really should tackle because there's How much work is this council? So many grants that we're overseeing and administering, we have to report right. them. I think we had talked about like a 2% admin fee or something, but it, it adds up when you look at the amount of grants. Yeah, and if, if there are reporting requirements on the town as the applicant uh, grantee, um, yeah, that's that's a load on us. I I love the partnership. I, I understand the value of having our wastewater treated at the best possible location, and it makes a ton of sense uh, to do this. But just looking out for town budgets, um, yeah, I, I bring this up. I, I, we can certainly figure out a way to work that into there. Um, Al and Kathleen uh, from Champlain has kind of uh, spearheaded this grant, and I think his his goal was to take on as much of the burden as possible in this. And and I think, but I'll be honest, they're the ones who are going to benefit a, a lot from this because they're they, they're getting the contract, <laughs> we're getting the the equipment. But um, you know, part of the reason we're applying is because we don't we don't have the appetite to take on a complete rehab of the system and. We would probably, you know, try to continue to live by with replacing 
a couple of spare parts. So this will really help us you know, get something that's going to work really well for us and help us really maximize what we can do with this facility. Um, so I, I, I agree there should be, you know, your time is, is, is important to account for. <laughs> Uh, oh, particularly, there will be some legal expenses uh, associated with the agreements and such. If we could get reimbursed for that, uh, that would be helpful. Okay. Uh, I think this is great. I, I yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So the the motion will be the same, or will be amended? The motion would be the same, and in the process, Kathleen would work out for a reimbursement for our expenses. Okay. Yep. So I'll move to authorize the town manager to submit an ARPA pretreatment grant application to the state of Vermont on behalf of Whistle Pig Whiskey, and if approved by the state, I authorize the town of town to administer the grant in coordination with Whistle Pig. Second. We've been seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Since there's only five, my ears are here in five. There's no opposed. Okay. Excellent. Well, thanks, Jeremy. Appreciate it. Uh, let's hope you get it. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate your time, and uh, we'll stay in touch. Great. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Should have like the bank with the chain to the desk. <laughs> okay, nice. Oops, see Aaron there. Good. Hello, everybody. Hi, Aaron. So uh, you probably saw the what we went through uh, with Jeremy there. If you could do the same, uh, give us the thousand foot view and what you're asking for would be great. Yep, so, um, you know, very similar, the same, the same uh, grant application. And um, ours is a little bit bigger at, a, at $716,000. Uh, most of that is in equipment to basically replace an existing treatment system, the same technology, old unit, not sized appropriately for our facility and upsize it so that it is. So we're trying to keep this streamlined and simple so that it's not a lot of construction, it's not a lot of complicated studies, um, engineering, that kind of thing. And what we're pr proposing to do is take a unit that is currently sized at around 220 gallons per minute and replace it with a larger unit that will run about 400 gallons a minute. Um, we're also proposing to install a tank that would be larger, um, that would be sized to hold 24 hours of sludge or wastewater, uh, DAF, dissolved air flotation float, which is the sort of the, the, the concentrate that comes off of the treatment process. Um, just so that we have, um, if we didn't replace that or upsize it, you know, we'd be down to uh, potentially less than 12 hours of full time so that is not um, it's not really a it, it wouldn't be workable under con, under certain conditions um, I will say that this project I think uh, you know whether it's existing conditions or, or potentially these future conditions with a larger unit it, um, it has a lot of uh, synergy with the purpose energy digester project which is currently uh, under construction uh, in the industrial park over by the treatment plant, uh, the, uh, the, the town's treatment plant. And that is going to have, uh, we're actually going to be connected to that facility via a pump pipeline. Uh, and we have a feedstock agreement in place for this material. So um, we have an outlet for this material. And uh, so I think not only will it benefit the town in the sense that uh, we'll be able to 
retreat a high, to a higher level, especially during times of uh, higher flows, which is also typically associated with the highest loadings. So, um, but we will also be benefiting um, some of the state's goals around renewable energy because uh, the state is basically, the PUC is basically taking um, credit for every, every kilowatt that's being created out of that project. And um, there's also potentially in the future, I don't believe this is in phase one, but a renewable uh, heat component to that project as well. So all this to say that we have an outlet for the increased waste that we're generating that's economical in nature. So I think it all kind of fits together well. And um, the administrative fees, one of the nice things about this grant, at least in theory, you know, we'll see when the awards come out. If they're doing a lot of partial awards, I don't, you know, I don't know where, how things will shake out, but in theory, if there was a full award, one of the nice things about this grant is they're covering administrative costs, including engineering and including um, administrative fees for the grantee, who in this case will be the town of Middlebury. So I believe in that grant application from Whistlepig, that $12,000 is basically for the town of Millbury, for the town of Middlebury. So I believe that's already worked into that grant application, or at least it will be, you know, when all, when all things are said and done, because the grants are not filed yet, obviously. Um, that'll be, I think they'll be by the 21st. So in theory, these grants are like really, really favorable because they can cover up to 100% of the cost of the project. They'll cover your engineering costs. They'll cover the town's administrative costs. It's kind of a win-win situation. And for us, it's a really expensive piece of equipment and it's replacing a not at end of life piece of equipment. So it would be really difficult for us to go to our board and be like, this is a really good project. You know what I mean? Versus if the federal government or even the state through the ARPA, through the ARPA is going to fund this for us, it, it could be a great project. It, it really could benefit us long term because if, as we grow and if we ever have increased wastewater flows, um, you know, we don't need to go back to the town and ask for more allocation, which means other people can use that allocation, you know, other potential industrial users or more residential users of the college or whoever can, can utilize that space that's available at the municipal treatment plant, which is a critical component to any kind of development in the future. So. Um, this will set back and mark up well to hit our permit targets, enable the town to hit the permit targets, and set us up well for the future growth of both the town and the Agamark uh, Creamery. Amazing. Good presentation. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I have a absolutely. question, and, and it's, it's a matter of numbers, and I'm, I'm probably not understanding the project. You discharge an average of 386 gallons per day and part of your proposal, part of your proposal is to install a 20,000 gallon tank to which could capture 24 hours of discharge. 20,000? Yeah. 20, so I, I can explain that. Okay. So um, the, the facility discharges 386,000 gallons per day of water, wastewater to the municipal treatment plant. Of that, a certain portion of it, in this case, a maximum of like 70, what was it, 80, 70 something percent can be run through this treatment unit. Can be or doesn't? Can be. Okay. So we like, it depends on, it depends on a number of factors, but so it doesn't always run 24 hours, but the, that unit is then floating material out of that volume. So, and then capturing, it's actually scraping that off the top. Ah. So you're capturing only, you know, a very small percentage of that flow. So maybe say, I mean, I don't want to do math on the fly here, but so if we're, if we're running it for 24 hours, say we're capturing four to 6,000 gallons of concentrated wastewater. You know and what I mean? Like that's what the material that we're pulling out of the wastewater so that we're sending cleaner effluent to Middlebury. And that's why the sizing is, you know, quite a bit less for a 24 hour retention time. And and what you scrape off of the top is what you treat? And the other the is just sent, sent straight in to the plant? Well, the stuff, yeah, the stuff that we scrape off the top, I mean, if you were to look at it, it looks like uh, like fluffy, oily, like, uh, Sludge. solids that come off of dairy <laughs> mm. and um, we, we will be sending that to purpose 
energy to the anaerobic digester where it will then get further broken down and take that material and actually turn it into renewable power. So does that make sense? Does yes, but where does it go now? It's going to, uh, it's either going to, most of it's actually going to Vanguard, um, who run a digester down in Salisbury, <coughs> Goodrich Dairy Farm. Okay. Um, but it also goes to manure pits when that's not available or, um, so it's going to manure pits and it's going to um, Salisbury digester. Okay. Got it. No, I understand. So it's not. You guys are smiling because you know the dairy industry, and I don't. <laughs> it's all right. I drink milk. I uh, drink almond milk. Almond milk. Well, one of the things that was so good about getting the getting the Goodrich project going down there. Yeah. Right. That and the food waste mm. that they're taking. Uh, these businesses are important they're to us. Quite a few of our materials. Yeah. Congratulations on getting this application together so quickly. Thank you. It's not quite done yet, but we are almost there. I think we're, I'm ready to put the, pop, the finishing touches on and send it over to the town of Middlebury for um, final review and, and send it off. Great. Any other questions? If not, a pleasure of the board on this uh, request. Okay. I'll move to authorize Good. the town manager to submit and ARPA pre-treatment grant application to the state of Vermont on behalf of Agrimat Cabot and if approved by the state, I authorize the town to administer the grant in coordination with Agrimat Cabot. I second it. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Congratulations, Aaron. Uh, wishing you luck on this. Well, thank you all. We'll see how it turns out. And um, if we get the award, we will circle back and uh, hopefully have a successful project. Great. Sounds good. Thank, thank you, you, Aaron. <coughs> and with that, we go to Kathleen about our policy review committee. So, so following up on our June 13th meeting where we discussed the reinstating the policy review committee, uh, we're back with you with a request to uh, appoint its members, uh, Donna Donahue and Gary Baker, uh, residents of the town of Middlebury who formerly ser or served on the select board and in various other capacities <coughs> in the town have expressed their willingness to continue uh, to serve on the policy review committee, as have Andy and Isabel. Let's go. <laughs> And I'm, I'm pleased that they're excited about policy. Oh, he's just <laughs> grew an inch. <laughs> um, so, so that is our request. And as we um, said in our, uh, in David's uh, May 25th uh, memo to you, uh, the original intent of this committee was to conduct a full review of the existing town policies. This initial responsibility will continue, although the reviews will be focused on policies specifically recommended by the select board for further consideration, as opposed to another wholesale review of all town policies. In addition to this, the committee will also serve as an initial forum for prospective public policy and public procedure ideas and concerns raised by select board members and can initially be considered um, in further detail. Where necessary, the committee and assigned town staff will conduct research to better understand how a proposed idea may impact both town government and the broader community and how the particular matter has been addressed in other communities. Amazing. So this will be a four member committee Yes. Okay. But David's going to be part of this? Or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So, and but he won't be. He'll be the staff person, oh. and Beth will also be joining in. Well, then, didn't we had this with Chris English before? Yes. Policy? yes. And Victor was on it, right? Yes. Or, yeah. I like the makeup of that committee. We've got a historian, um, an administrator, an educator. An attorney. 
Yeah. 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 We're not sure of the title there. <laughs> Good. Any questions or thoughts on that? I think it's great that we're turning it back up again. Mm -hmm. We just talked about the ARPA funding thing, and this committee can look mm -hmm. into that administrative fee and all those things. And right. We can get back on track. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of things that I think come up in this body and, and need folks to dig into. And, and come back together mm -hmm. to discuss. Perhaps the first thing they can look into is administration of fees for uh, for grant uh, grant overseeing grants, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we could. And we've, we've been through this, like Lindell, they applied for a grant, we applied for them, right? There was a lot of work we do. We, we, we do we it regularly. Yeah, regularly. Sure. Yeah. Every year there's some. Right. Okay, pleasure of the board. So I'll move to appoint Gary Baker and Donna Donahue to the Town of Middlebury's Policy Review com Subcommittee, each to a one-year term. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I also move to appoint select board members Isabel Gogardi and Andy Hooper to serve as members of the Town of Middlebury's Policy Review Subcommittee. I second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 You guys. You guys are so nice. Aww. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> okay, now we do need to be thinking about direction and, and specific assignments for this subcommittee. Uh, so. Maybe we allow them to give us some proposals of things that they would like to see. As I know, Andy and Isabel have got lots of thoughts on that. That's why they volunteered. Yeah. Who's got check warrants tonight? Me. All right. I move to approve total expenditures in the amount of $463,867.16, consisting of $330,824.08 for accounts payable and $133,043.08 for payroll for the period of June 28th, 2023 through July 11th, 2023. Second. Moved and seconded. Nobody wants to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little sleepy on the switch tonight. Not sleepy, just missing the two people that make all the nominations in the seconds. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Gotten gun shy. All in favor, <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Board member concerns. Um, I would like to um, uh, recognize that. Um, Betty Nuovo died this past week and um, was uh, buried this weekend and um, recognize everything that she's done for this community over the years, 30 plus years in the legislature, an, an attorney, and, um, and you know, leaving Victor uh, behind who was one, one of a select board member and a, and a great citizen of the community who's very, Lonely right now and by himself, and um, but um, a, a great couple. And um, I think if they had a a hall of fame for husbands, I think my nomination for the year would be Victor. I mean, he's he's just been unbelievable. And uh, we had breakfast with him this morning, and it was really good to talk to him. Um, the other thing I'd like to do is uh, recognize the fact that that what's going on in the state and our um, many of our uh, select boards are going to be really busy with business that they didn't anticipate and the citizens of the state and and for recognizing Chief Shaw and his great guys and finally getting the opportunity to um, which was something they weren't wanting to do but to, to use their swift boat training and rescue capabilities that, that we have here in town um, so that's what I have 
Next, Dan. Isabel. Yeah, um, I wanted to send my condolences to the Rutland Police Department for mm. the loss of one of their newest members. Um, and also just highlight all of the work that our police department has been doing over the past couple weeks since our last meeting um, and just highlight the work that they've done. Okay, thank you. So I'll second what Dan said about Victor and Betty. There's a beautiful piece that was uh, written by Swift House in Five Things We Love mm -hmm. About Betty. It was so beautiful. It just captures everything about her. Um, I, I saw Victor this morning for breakfast and my heart goes out to him. For a couple to live like 60 plus years together hmm. and losing, and he's one of the most loving person holding hands with her all the time. It was so cute. Um, the, the floods, I hope everybody's safe. There's so much damage, so many people um, are cut off. Ludlow is still, roads are closed, I heard. So I hope everybody stays safe and hope for the best. We have, I sprung about five leaks in my store today. Mm. I've already had five, so I had to match with them. <laughs> but the, the rain is so much, there's nothing mm -hmm. we can do about it. Yeah. It was amazing watching the national news tonight. It was the, the opening was Vermont. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like the storm only hit Vermont. They had incredible footage, even though our local stations have been on all day. The national just got some fabulous footage. So, uh, unbelievable, it's crazy stuff. Um, yeah, um, having lived in Montpelier during Irene, um, Montpelier was basically spared. It was the Dog River that brought all the rain, all the water in, and so Waterbury got hammered and Montpelier got some water from that one. But this one, just a little bit farther north and such a different outcome. Um, yeah, my heart goes out to my friends and neighbors uh, in the communities that really bore the brunt of this. This is ice jam volume. Oh my God, it, it, it's crazy. The Wrightsville Reservoir, which they released water from around noontime today, um, normally you look at it when you're out paddling or whatever on the reservoir there, and it is just this huge wall, like 20 plus feet above where the water is. And you're like, oh, why'd they build it so big? That's ridiculous. And it was within a foot of the top for the first time in construction, yeah, in the hundred years almost that that's existed. Did it get up to a foot? It was within a, a foot. foot. Last night I heard it was like five feet. Yeah, it was. It was six, uh, like at nine a.m., and it was within a foot by noon. It's back down to two. Yeah. Oh, so good. how did your business do? I mean, your business is right on the the bank there, on a on a bend in the river. The uh, culvert that's supposed to keep the water away from my business plugged and so oh dear we were close today we were cleaning, <laughs> cleaning up uh, we were actually very blessed to, to wasn't worse than, the, than it was I had a tractor and I mean some equipment that it could have been so much worse so you look at what other people have and you just you know I can't complain <laughs> yeah but you're sitting right on that river right in a oh, bend yeah. too that thing had to be smashing there yeah we spent we spent I don't know, it was almost a couple hundred thousand in stormwater work in the last couple of years, and I guess it paid off. So in 2011, it wiped that business out. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I see there's so many requests on Facebook and from course people are looking for sump pumps mm -hmm. to drain their basements. Yeah. 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 I was I was getting I was in uh, the hardware store getting a couple <laughs> things last night on my way home and. Said, and uh, somebody's in there buying sump pumps. They said, oh, your basement's flooded. Oh, no, it's not yet. But uh, I know it, when it, if it does flood, the pump should be sold out. So they were <laughs> anticipating. Good thinking. Um, did you have anything else? That's enough, I think. Yeah. Uh, so we do have... Uh, oh, you know, for those that are watching, uh, if if you do have to travel, uh, I was a lot of my staff didn't know is 511. If you go on uh, 
and just do 511 New England and you can do the map and it'll show you can map your route to, uh, it'll map it for you and it'll show you any road closures and so if you want to be safe uh, and you if you're planning to go somewhere uh, just take a look and you you'll know what roads are closed ahead of time so uh, if you do a little bit of prior planning uh, it can still go smooth uh, with that uh, can you take us into no I sure session? can yeah do, 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 do. There we go. Um, What's it for? This will be for personnel. Okay. In accordance with Vermont's open meeting law requirements, I move that the board find the premature general knowledge of any consideration of personnel matters would clearly place the select board at a substantial disadvantage because the select board risks disclosing its strategy. for negotiating personnel matters if it discusses it in public. Second. <laughs> Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 I further move that the board enter into the executive session to discuss personnel matters under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are in closed session.